In our last video, we saw that Go applications are subject to panic either when the application does not know what to do next or we use the inbuilt panic function to cause our Go applications to panic. In this short video, we will try to see how can we recover from a panicking situation in Go. For that, let us try to see uh, the program that we have on the screen currently. Uh, we have a main function which prints a certain string, main, start learning to recover. Then we execute a function uh, which causes panics and is appropriately named as I cause panics. Uh, within the I cause panics function, we print about to panic and then the application simply panics, uh, which makes this line of code totally unreachable. Uh, and then the panic would to the calling function, which is main and then main would panic and the panic would flip all the way to the go runtime and then our application will simply be stopped. So when I try to run this, yeah, I see the output is as expected. Uh, we see this line of, of output here. We uh, then call I cause panics function. We see this line of output here and then our application panics and uh, it exits and we simply see this stack trace right here. So is there any way in Go that even if a panic occurs in our programs, we might be able to recover from that panic and continue the normal course of execution of our Go program? Uh, well, there is definitely a way to do that and that is the use of the recover keyword. To demonstrate that, I will quickly paste some code uh, into the playground and let's try to analyze what's going on here. So here we have a try to recover function which will try to recover our program after a panic occurs. For that, we are making use of the predefined recover function within Go. So uh, what does this recover function do? Let us read about it from this blog about defer panic and recover on the blog.golang.org website. So uh, here it says that recover is a built-in function that regains control of a panicking go routine. That is exactly what we were looking for. Recover is useful only inside deferred functions. So we'll see that just in a minute. During normal execution, a call to recover will return nil and have no effect. If the current go routine is panicking, a call to recover will capture the value given to panic and resume normal execution. So what they're trying to say is that if there is no panic happening and we uh, call recover, it will return us a nil value. Whereas if we call recover in a panicking situation, then it will capture the value of the error given to the panic and it will try to resume the normal course of execution. Let's head back to our example. Now we just read on the Go blog that recover is useful within deferred functions. Uh, so to be able to use the try to recover function within the panicking function or the I cause panic functions, we would simply say defer try to recover. Now what is the significance of defer here? Well, you can recall from the video on defer that any functions which get deferred are called just before the enclosing function, in this case I cause panics, is about to return. So uh, in this case, what will happen is that once the panic sets in or the panic occurs, then uh, our I cause panics function is trying to recover by calling the try to recover function. Within the try to recover function, we have a call to recover, which will recover our program and our normal course of execution will continue. Now, please note here that the execution will be picked up from the function which called the panicking function, in this case, main. So the fact to note here is that once a panicking function uh, recovers, the execution continues from the function which actually made the call to the panicking function. It will all be clearer when I try to run this program. And let's try to analyze the output. Uh, so this is the first line that's get print, that gets printed. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Then uh, I cause panics function runs. It defers a function call try to recover. And then uh, the function prints about to panic. And then the function does panic. 
but just before the i cos panics function exits it tries to recover and here we have a call to recover and since this recover is being called in a context which is panicking uh, we will be receiving a error from the recover function and here we are checking if error is not nil we print uh, the string recovered from error and then we print the error message we can see here recovered from error and then this is a message supplied by panic and post that i cos panics functions cannot continue uh, and execution will be brought back to the main function post the i cos panics call and we see that this statement or this string main post panic gets printed and that is the way that the recover function can help us recover from panicking situations in a go program so what do you think will happen if i try to call uh, the try to recover function uh, from a context which is not even panicking let's try to run this and we see that our program just flows normally uh, we see this output then we see this output then we see this output and then we see this output and what happens when we call recover well there's nothing to recover from really so nothing happens if you guys actually want to see what's going on inside the try to recover function i could actually put in uh, an else branch here and simply print nothing to recover from and then print the value of error when i try to run this uh, okay we see that uh, this output uh, does occur here on the screen uh, nothing to recover from and the value of err is nil and when was the try to recover function called uh, well by the sequence of things uh, we know that it was called after this print statement which is basically before the i cos panics function decided to return now it might very much be the case that even after we try to recover we might end up in a situation which is just disastrous and our application cannot continue in this case uh, after the call to recover uh, if we find out that uh, you know there's no way that this application should continue uh, we could raise another panic and then it's up to the function which called the panicking function to handle the panicking situation when i try to run this okay uh, we see the same output because we didn't decide to panic in the i cause panics function this time uh, now it will uh, well what do i see uh, i see that uh, from one panic we did uh, recover uh, which is this one uh, cannot continue to execute well pardon me for this uh, and then from uh, that recovery we see that another panic occurred which is cannot recover from panic and then we see the entire stack trace right here uh, well and that is all i had to discuss about panicking and recovering from panicking situations in go for further details to read this blog i will link it in the description below and it's a very awesome blog and i'm sure you'll have a lot of fun reading it all of the code that we just saw has been updated in this github repository ae dorado slash learning go and the file name is recover.go so please do check it out as well if you found the content of the video helpful, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. And like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon in a brand new tutorial.